It's Halloween, everybody. One month when everybody gets to let their love for the spooky shine. This time of year is just the absolute peak for me. There's pumpkins everywhere, the weather is amazing, there's even people giving out free bowls of candy, as long as you're fast enough. So this year, I'm not holding back. I'm going straight to the most terrifying, most horrible, most awful, most putrid thing that the internet has ever had the misfortune of experiencing. Undertale. Allow me to explain. One day in the ancient year of 2015, a young talented developer by the name of Toby Fox set out on his quest to create the most depressing metagame of all time. After a lot of deliberation and trial and error, his masterpiece had been completed. He entitled it Undertale and released his creation to the masses. But in his hubris, he made a most dastardly mistake. He made his game full of mystery and intrigue, with interesting and layered characters, each with their own personalities and respective sets of flaws. It was only a matter of time before the dark corners of the internet got to it and sent it the way of the Five Nights at Freddy's. As good as the game was, it had been inevitably destroyed by its own fanbase. But Undertale was far from Toby Fox's original creation. According to legend, there exists another. One which hadn't been dragged out back and beaten with a shovel by its own fanbase. That game was known as the Earthbound Halloween Hack. So naturally, since it has Halloween in the title, that'll be the subject of today's video. So, without any further ado, I present to you the Earthbound Halloween Hack. Well, here we go. Time to start up a new game on this unnecessarily catchy title screen. Select the text speed. Quick, because... Gotta go fast. Now, uh... What's your fave, Frank? Uh... Okay? I get the feeling this won't matter at all for the rest of the game. Do you get that feeling? I get that feeling. Oh, okay, so now we get to name a bunch of characters. Yes, um, our character, obviously, Tardo, because why not? The long lost hero. Yes, um, Poopy. <laughs> okay, another lost hero. He's got blonde hair, you know, Donald Trump. All right, here we have another lost hero. Yeah, this guy looks like a hardcore gamer, so, uh, yeah, that seems about right. Ooh, a dog. Yeah, we're gonna name this guy Gator. That way we always know who plays Fortnite whenever we're walking around. Favorite food? Well, it's Halloween, so I think it'd be blasphemous not to choose candy corn. You aren't psychic. What? That's like fucking am. Watch, I'll move this ball with just my mind. You know what? Well, fuck you, game. Yeah, there we go. So after that heartwarming experience, uh, we're greeted to a series of establishing shots and we're reminded that it's the year 1990X. The best year. Then we're immediately taken right into the intense and creepy atmosphere of a, a, oh, oh, yeah that seems about right. Then we wake up in a theater and go to talk to our manager, who happens to be the former mayor of Three Daughter. He proceeds to inform you that a horrible monster has brutally murdered a girl's parents and that it's your job to hunt it down and kill it. Also, bear in mind that you don't exactly have a fucking choice. May I ask what gives you, the fucking show manager, the authority to tell me to hunt down a vicious and highly dangerous monster that gruesomely tore apart a girl's family in front of her? Oh yeah, okay. Now we can begin our epic quest to- uh, hold, hold on. Oh god, it's a die! Okay, but like, uh, where do I go? Maybe if I go to this farmer's market, there'll be something for me to do. Oh look, it's a friendly guy on top of a roof. I wonder what he has to say. Hell yes, Mexican. What? Oh shit! A 
Okay, well, uh, besides the incredibly offensive choice of Halloween costumes, there's not really anything here. You know what? Well, if this place isn't gonna give me any thrills, then I might as well take a journey out of town. I- oh god, it's a walking trash can. Yeah, I say bring it on. This won't be the first time I've iced a trash can. Needless to say, I have plenty of experience dealing with this sort of thing, so there's absolutely no way that- Okay, well, you know, out of town wasn't really doing it for me, you know, I just wasn't really feeling like it was working out for me, you know, it's just, it's not really my thing, I think I'm just gonna go back to the city. Huh, well, uh, maybe I'll find something at this here mall. Wow, these are some mighty fancy escalators you got here. It'd be a shame if somebody were to sled down them. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, I honestly have no idea where to go. Maybe talking to the manager again will help. I don't know, it works for soccer moms. I don't see why it can't work for me. So this here manager fellow tells me I need to go through the sewers. But how exactly do I go about that? The manhole cover has nothing on it, so I just... Uh, Oh. Oh. Well, folks, it seems that this episode has been made arbitrarily longer by the fact that I'm an idiot. So now we can finally begin our journey through the sewers to a- Hang on. Fucking- uh, Okay, can I just like- uh, Fuck! So yeah, at this point in the game you need to have certainly more experience than I do. More health, and possibly even more party members to get yourself through, because enemies in this segment get significantly more difficult. And so begins the age-old RPG tradition of level grinding. And in the interest of being different and increasing this video's runtime, I'm going to show you the whole thing in its entirety unedited. Yeah, painful, right? Boring, right? Is this a joke to you? Well, okay, well, for the sake of maintaining at least some viewership, I'll spare you the pain of watching me level grind. But just know the horrors I persevered through to make this video. So after a sufficient amount of level grinding, I finally managed to get to the other side of the sewers and made it into... A That certainly escalated quickly. Much like this next gag, brought to you by Spanky's brand Caramel Salted Chocolate Chunk Chips. This stupid joke has no relation to the source material. Well, now that we're finally through the sewers, we get to take a nice stroll through Mad Max Park and encounter all sorts of friendly faces, like Innocent Man, that we still slaughter anyway. Papyrus. And even... Wait, uh, what was that last one again? Hey, can we, can we roll that clip back? Yeah, just like roll back to that last clip. I think I might have had a stroke. Well, from here, you walk through this dystopian wasteland, saying hello to all the friendly faces that you'll most certainly become very well acquainted with in the several hours you spend here. Until eventually, you make your way to a lone little building. Inside, you talk with the evil professor, who gives you a few hundred lines of exposition before disappearing completely. But he does leave you with a nice little tidbit of knowledge that the monster you're looking for is conveniently right here inside this tiny little pod. Well, isn't that nice of him? Let's crack it open and see what we got.
Yep. This is it. The end of the game. All of that fucking build up, and this is it. Well, as the saying goes, never attack a beaver in a school restroom, or else you might just find a nail in your potato soup. Well, I'm gonna go get me a- <gasps> A curse! Oh no! Oh no.